What do you f think about hardcore Advaitians like Tony Parsons saying that nothing can be done for the realization of oneness? I think, Sebastian, that you don't understand what Tony's saying. That's not what he says. Sebastian! <laughs> they say that realization of oneness happens uncaused, reasonless, randomly. What does Lisa think about this? They don't say that, Sebastian. <sighs> you misunderstand what they say. You summarize what they say. Did you ever hear them say that? Or is that your interpretation of what they say? Your mind even thinks that's what they say. I'll tell you what t Tony says. And I really, really like Tony and I really appreciate his work and I think it's really beautiful. I also think that people can take it to the extremes and believe it's the new religion or the new God and get stuck in that way of thinking. And I think that most people misinterpret what he says. They don't say there's nothing you can do. They say there is no you. That's entirely different. The you is always doing something. And they don't say it happens uncaused. They don't say that because then that would imply that something happens to someone. They're saying that who you are is the core, is the causeless that's always here. And it's not someone it happens to. So it's not that person that can cause its own awakening. That person doesn't exist. Underlying my message, I'm saying the same thing. That person cannot awake it itself. Who awakens? Who can cause its awakening? What causes a thunderstorm? Where is the beginning of a thunderstorm? Where is the beginning of this universe? Where is the beginning of somebody's awakening? And how can you say what causes awakening? A butterfly on the other side of the universe causes somebody's awakening? Or because they did emotional technique releases or once listened to Lisa Cairns? Everything we think, everything we know is a craziness. We made up, as humans, the idea of cause and effect. We made it up. So therefore, how can it apply to this? But ultimately, you can't speak like that. And we then go back into speaking in the human terms. But even what I recommend isn't me recommending it to someone. You might think I'm recommending that to someone, but I'm not. There isn't anyone there that could or couldn't do anything. It happens. It's a happening. I love a Tony, but like everything, it has its plus and its minuses. I also meet people that go to Tony for many years, really don't understand what he says, and then think they're enlightened because they intellectually understand it. And I don't understand the meanness and the some of the nastiness that goes on at Tony's, like the meanness to people. He does not recommend anything to do as far as I know. But just listening to his talks is something. So he might not recommend it because he doesn't see somebody there. But it's a happening. He also says if you meditate for 20 years and you think, well, then meditating was a waste of time, he says it can't be because it couldn't happen any way, other way. He does recommend going to his retreats. I know that if you speak to him personally on the phone, and being in the energy of someone. But anyway, even re recommending or not, that's beside the point. So Sebastian, you have to look inside you of what's addicted to that, doing something. What if you took away that belief that you can do something to get somewhere? What does that make you feel? Normally it makes people feel too out of control of their experience and then they feel afraid. So therefore they keep repeating that they can do something to get somewhere. But who? Who can do something to get somewhere? Who? Who are you? Who's doing this? Who's creating this? Who creates thoughts? Who creates urges? But thanks, Sebastian. I love it when I get feisty like that. I love that energy. Rawr!